In the previous lesson, we went over some of the OPSEC guidelines for accessing Wi-Fi networks in public places. One of those guidelines was to access the Wi-Fi network from distance and not to physically enter the premises such as an internet cafe or a hotel. In this lesson, we will discuss what equipment you can use to access publicly available Wi-Fi hotspots from distance. The lesson will also follow the OPSEC guidelines including the precautions that you should take. And we will also look at a service that you can use to find Wi-Fi hotspots to connect to. So the best option for accessing Wi-Fi hotspots is to be as far away as you can when making the connection. This could be quite a distance using the right device, maybe even 20 kilometers away. Following OPSEC guidelines, use a virtual machine for virtual isolation when connecting to the network, or a firewall router VPN for physical isolation. Encryption and anonymizing services should be used even if you are using public Wi-Fi. A public network can still give away your approximate location through its IP. An observer who conducts further investigation can find your exact location through the ISP for the public Wi-Fi network. Anonymizing services prevent adversaries from being able to narrow down who you might be. They will have no knowledge of your approximate location to work with. Hotspots can log everything where you go on the internet, contents of packets, and MAC addresses if there is no encryption. You should consider using disposable hardware, such as disposable network dongles, and use one per alias, and also use software known as MAC changes. Wi-Fi networks log MAC addresses of Wi-Fi adapters that connect to them. MAC addresses are unique for every device. Your device will be identified by the network, and the MAC address may have association to your identity. Use MAC changes to change the MAC address of the dongle you are using. Disable any Wi-Fi adapters that you are not using. Using VPNs or SSH for encryption may not raise alarms, but using the Tor browser whilst connected to the network might do. You either don't use Tor or you use less bridges and pluggable transport, so you do not raise suspicions. Whichever you use first to connect to the Wi-Fi network, whether it is a VPN or other tunnels like SSH or John Donim, Make sure there is no connection to your identity, so no money trails and connections to you. You want to make sure there are no data leaks, such as an email client that starts checking and sending emails before you even connect your VPN or Tor browser to the network. Consider using a separate operating system or a virtual system for the connection, so Tails or a Linux VM will be best. And you can use a host-based firewall or a router-based firewall for blocking leaks with a special configuration for when you are on Wi-Fi hotspots. The configuration should make sure that the only thing activated is the VPN or other encrypted tunnel. All other services are disabled. You can use a portable router and route all traffic through that. This provides physical isolation, but again, the router's MAC address would need to be changed. Use separate dongles with each router that you use per identity. So if you have four identities or aliases that you communicate through, then you need four routers, one specified for each identity. Do not use Windows or Mac OS. They are both considered a weakness for security. They are known for data leaks. So your best option is to use a Linux-based distribution as your operating system when connecting to public Wi-Fi. So that is the security guidelines covered. What about discovering Wi-Fi hotspots? How do you go about finding a hotspot that you can connect to? You can use a service like this one, Wiggle.net. This service is used by hackers trying to discover unsecured networks, but it can also be used to find publicly available Wi-Fi hotspots. Here's a map of London. As you can see on the map, there are many Wi-Fi networks, and some of them will be free public hotspots that you can access. As you'll be trying to access the Wi-Fi from distance, you should consider purchasing an antenna for your device. There are no recommendations in this course. This is just an example product on Amazon. You'll have to do some research on which antenna would be suitable for your needs and your budget.